morning, New Emmanuel. If you will, let's all stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, Father. We want to bring glory and honor and praise to you, Father. We want to honor you, Father, as our Lord and our Savior, Father. Lord, we just ask that you'll be with us today, Father, that everything will be pleasing to you, Father. Lord, that, that you will be the center of attention, Father, because that's who you are. And Father, help us, Lord Jesus, to do what you want us to do in this service, Father. And Lord, we just pray that your holy anointing will be on the singing, on the preaching, Father, on any word that's spoken, Father, to bring glory and honor to you. And Lord, we're just going to give you praise and we're going to give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. We want to say happy birthday to April, to Amy, to Nancy, to Hannah, to Cody, to Erica, to our other Nancy, uh, to Misty, and to others in March. Uh, today we have Children's Church with Tina. Uh, she's doing the five finger prayer memory verse in Proverbs 30 and 3. Today is Easter play practice. I will need the uh, praise team, especially the praise team to stay if you possibly can. Um, then Zori's, am I pronouncing it right? Zori's birthday dedication is today. Uh, March the 20th is the men and ladies meeting at the Greasons. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Please bring a dish of food to share with everybody. Uh, March the 22nd is Wednesday night Bible study with Kenny at 7.30. And April the 1st is the men's breakfast at Golden Corral. It's men's breakfast with one man put on the beginning of that. One man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, seriously, April the 1st is Men's Breakfast at Golden Corral. It's called, uh, their title is Follow Me. So apparently there's going to be some good ministry going on that day. April the 9th is Easter Play, The Great Commission. April the 23rd is Homecoming with a special guest of Deborah Perry and Jaden's Call. Welcome to all of our visitors, and if you need a packet, we will make sure that Valana, that's a.k.a. Val, will make sure that you get something, okay, before you leave today. Uh, y'all, please remember all of these in prayer. I'm not going to go through all the names, but I'm on there, so y'all remember me. All right, we're going to go straight into the devotion. Um, first of all, I want to tell you the word that I'm going to be saying isn't used in slang, but it's a description of an animal in the Bible. All right, in Zechariah 9 and 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fowl of an ass. This word was prophecy in the Old Testament about Jesus. In Matthew 21 and 2, this is Jesus speaking, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And verse 6 through 9, the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat and put them, their clothes, and set him on, on them, on him. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, Others cut down branches from trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This was the triumphal entry prophecy from the Old Testament being fulfilled by Jesus in the New Testament. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been reading the Bible and a scripture just all of a sudden just pops out at you? It comes alive and you're like, oh, I've got to find what this means. You know, what is God talking? Why is this like this? Well, that's what happened to me when I was reading Matthew chapter 21. And, you know, I've never thought about those two animals. Uh, only the one that Jesus had rode, which was the colt. And I started questioning, why two animals? Why two, when Jesus could only ride one? 
And why did he ride the coat instead of the donkey? All right, because the donkey's only four to six months, uh, the coat was only four to six months old. So I found a few references. One said the older donkey represented the Old Testament and the coat represented the New Testament. Another said Matthew was just quoting Old Testament and there was only the coat because the other Gospels, only the coat is mentioned. And another said the mileage was so much that Jesus rode the mother donkey to the town and then rode the coat to the streets. Any of these could be true but we'll probably never know. But let me tell you how these scriptures spoke to me, okay? And why the two donkeys. The donkey was the mother with her coat. With the coat being only four to six months old, she wasn't old enough to leave her mother. The mother had bore this coat, fed her, nurtured her, groomed her, helped her walk on her own, she did all the things a mother would do to prepare her offspring to do what a donkey does by nature, and that is to carry a rider. This mother, not knowing the greatness of what was going to take place, was preparing her coat for ministry. The ministry that this coat had been chosen to do from the foundations of the world when the cross was put into place. The coat the coat. The coat carried out her ministry when she rode Jesus, the Savior of the world, on her back through the streets of Jerusalem. So, you wonder how that we can reply, apply this to our lives? Do you think the mother donkey knew the purpose of why her coat was born? With this in mind, let me ask you these questions. Are you grooming, feeding, Nurturing and preparing your child or children or someone God has put into your charge to do the work of a ministry that they may be called to do? Are you feeding them in prayer time, Bible reading, encouraging them to listen to Christian music, making sure that they go to children's church and to church? I just want to give you an example. And Val, yesterday she was talking when we were up here doing some of the preparations for the Easter play. Come on up, Val. And... It just spoke to my heart, like, I've got to put this into this devotion, you know, and you got to be quick. When God says do it, you do it, okay? So I want to let her share what she was telling us yesterday. Good morning, New Emmanuel. Um, as I guess most of you know, some of you know, um, I have joined a, what, it's called Georgia Worship Choir. Um, thankful to Miss Jenny over here, sending it to my messenger um, I never thought I would do anything like that, <laughs> and I had to pray about it, actually, because I'm like, I cannot get in front of that many people, because we're talking hundreds of people, um, but you guys know I love to sing. It's when I feel God the most, um, feel his presence, so I know I had to at least sign up, um, <laughs> And I started going to practices. So me and Memphis go to practice on Sunday nights. There's a couple of practices a week. Um, I know we'll have it in the billet bulletin eventually. Our first concert is in Lawrenceville on April 30th. I hope that anybody can come on that Sunday night. I think it starts at 6. Um, but watching my son, I was telling Aunt Brenda, watching my son watch me and watch this, this man that has started this. He's a choir director. Um, knowing, knowing that this is not just for me. This is for my son. Um, he sings every word with us. He's watching that director and what he's doing. And I know without a doubt that this boy was meant to stand beside me one day, and it, it's going to happen. You guys are going to see it. I know it. I know it. And you know what? He may be directing a choir one day because he is there with me. He is watching. He is talking to these grown people as a little nine-year-old boy. And he, he's excited. He's excited I can't, I can't 
I'm gonna sh I'm, I want to show you guys just a short video. You can't show it. Can we listen to Can we play the audio? Okay. We're going to play some audio of um, us practicing. This is over 50 people in a choir and my son taping it. You're going to hear what you think is my voice, but it's my son's voice. And I cried all night when I heard it. But I wanted you guys to hear this, that these little eyes, these little ears, bring them up, raise them up, and they will stick with God. Thank you, Lord. That's good. <clears throat> I keep listening to that, and I think it's my voice, and it's just so wonderful. <laughs> um, such a blessing for me. Um, what you guys don't see, this is Memphis videoing this, and he, vid he made so many videos um, and literally talking through some of them as he was the um, director. But the, cra the crazy thing about this whole experience that me and Memphis are going through together, which is completely awesome, <laughs> is um, the fact the director, the way God just plans everything, the director's wife, <laughs> the director's wife didn't, didn't know her until I walked in, you know, three weeks ago into the first practice and, you know, said, hello, my name is Val. Um, Memphis had surgery Tuesday on his eyes, and we were there Sunday before Tuesday. And I told her what we were going to do and asked her to be praying. <laughs> and she goes, sweetie, that's exactly the building and the suite I work in. I will make sure I'm there for you. She walked in. It made Memphis so comfortable. And then right after surgery, she came back and made sure that me and him were okay. So God put her in that position because Memphis was anxious. But when he saw her, he lit up. So what a wonderful God to put people in places when we need them. Raise your children up. They won't ever depart. They won't ever depart. Jennifer, Zuri, she's our angel. I have to say that right now. She's our angel here in our ark. Thank you, Lord. Jenny. <laughs> I did not know, Jenny, that you were the one who got her in contact with this. So you are one of the ones that she is, in, you're in charge because God put it on your heart for her. So her ministry is because of you and you listening to God. That's one of the examples, okay?
you, darling. I really appreciate it. It was a spur of the moment. Um, anyway, uh, all of this, what I was talking about, what Val was talking about, this is equipping them and the knowledge, our children, okay, uh, that they'll need to start their ministry. We don't always know what that ministry is that God's got prepared for our children, but our responsibility is to do what the Bible says. Val didn't know this was from scripture, but Proverbs, Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You as a parent are very important in fulfilling the ministry of your children. Prepare your children for royalty. You could be raising the next Billy Graham, Laura Dagan, Daigle, you know, et cetera, any of these ones that God has put out there for, to be that master example for us. So again, why two animals? Two animals were very important in fulfilling the earthly ministry of Jesus. Poor in stature, a coat and her mother became royalty. Praise team, if y'all come on up.